From cars literally going into outer space, to Dom becoming a real-life Superman just to save Letty, it's safe to say the Fast franchise has turned pretty ridiculous over the years. And here's the real reason why. If you're a fan of fast cars, action, and a healthy dose of family, then you've probably watched at least one of these movies. Back in 2001, when the first movie was released, it took the world by storm. People loved seeing good-looking people driving cool cars at breakneck speeds. But what set the Fast and the Furious apart from other high-octane car movies was its intense street racing scenes and the theme of family. Dominic's heist crew was made up of his literal family and friends who were so close that they might as well have been family. Their chemistry was off the charts, and it added so much to the movie. Plus, the addition of Brian, an undercover cop who falls for Mia, added even more drama. And let's not forget those epic car racing scenes. But to be honest, not all the sequels lived up to the hype. Too Fast, Too Furious was a critical dud, and Tokyo Drift didn't have the star power of Vin Diesel or Paul Walker. I mean, Lucas Black did a decent job, but he wasn't the same as the original duo. Thankfully, the franchise got back on track with the return of Vin Diesel and Paul Walker in Fast and Furious. Fans were ecstatic to see the original cast back in action, but the movie didn't quite hit the mark. The plot was lacking, and the car chase scenes were dare I say, boring. That was when things started taking a turn, and not for the better. The Fast and the Furious franchise had a bit of a rough patch, but it came back swinging with the fifth installment, Fast Five. The movie went all out and threw every idea it had at the wall to see what stuck. One of the best moves was getting rid of the clunky plotline of Brian being a cop. We all knew that he was a good guy at heart. Art. But now, he was a part of Dom's crew. Then there was the addition of Dwayne The Rock Johnson as Hobbs, the perfect antagonist. That too without going overboard into the stereotypical bad guy territory. And let's be real, who doesn't love The Rock? Fast Five is where the franchise started to get wild though. But instead of being a result of bad filmmaking, it was all done on purpose. The focus was on the characters and the cars, with the likes of Tyrese and Ludacris doing their buddy comedy routine. And of course, we got the cars going fast, but in ways we'd never seen before. The movie was essentially a heist film that culminated in the epic moment of the crew towing a giant bank vault through the streets. It was completely ridiculous and impossible, but who cares? It was awesome and thrilling to watch. I mean, in the end, it paid off. The movie was a huge hit that was both commercially successful and critically praised for leaning into the crazy side. Honestly, after Fast Five, the franchise could have ended, and we would have been happy. But of course, they kept testing the waters, and fans expected things to get even more ridiculous, which they did. The sixth film, directed by Justin Lin, pushed the envelope even further. By this point, the crew had transformed into superhero-like characters, capable of withstanding anything that came their way including a car crash that sent a character flying through the air and onto another car's windshield. The film also featured a massive tank and a never-ending airport runway chase scene that defied all logic. But the franchise didn't stop there. Furious 7 capped up the intensity, with cars falling out of airplanes and a car launching through a skyscraper window, jumping to another building. The fate of the Furious definitely raise the stakes even higher. I mean, there was a chase scene involving a submarine and Dom's car outrunning a missile. The franchise had become a parody of itself, but it was still making a lot of money. Despite the absurdity, the franchise continued to attract positive reviews and huge box office receipts. It had become the ultimate popcorn movie, providing an escape from reality with its over-the-top action scenes. Some people criticized the franchise for being too un realistic, but it was hard to argue with its success. After all, if superhero movies could get away with it, why couldn't the Fast and the Furious franchise? In fact, the franchise leaned into its absurdity by giving fans what they had been asking for, 
I'm talking about the trip to space that had been joked about so many times. And they gave the fans exactly what they wanted in Fast 9, as a car got launched into space with a rocket strapped to it. It was the ultimate example of the franchise's willingness to go to ridiculous lengths to entertain its audience. I mean, they've been entertaining audiences with their high-octane action scenes and larger-than-life characters for years now. Sure, it may not be for everyone, but for those who enjoy it, the franchise is a welcome escape from reality. Not to mention, despite its emphasis on absurdity, the Fast and the Furious franchise still values family. It might have lost its way, but what keeps it tethered to its roots is its focus on characters like Dom and his crew, who are there for each other through thick and thin. This theme of family extends beyond the screen and into real life, as seen with the tragic death of Paul Walker during the filming of Furious 7. Instead of derailing the franchise, his passing only strengthened the love from fans. This resulted in the most memorable moment of the entire series, a touching and emotional send-off that saw Walker's face CGI'd onto that of his real-life brother. It's a moment that exemplifies the franchise's commitment to its core theme, reminding viewers that family is always at the heart of the Fast and the Furious movies. Despite the franchise's increasing tendency towards superhero-style absurdity and spectacle, it remains popular among audiences who are willing to suspend disbelief and enjoy the ride. With each new installment promising even more outrageous stunts and set pieces, it's clear that Fast 10 will continue this trend, taking viewers on a wild and unforgettable journey. However, no matter how outrageous things get, the franchise will always be grounded in its theme of family, which remains the beating heart of this beloved series. But that's pretty much old news now, so let's talk about a new theory that fans have come up with. They think that the events of the films are all a product of Dom's unconscious mind. This theory works around some of the more inexplicable, hand-waved, and flat-out impossible elements of the franchise, which have led many to call the Toretto's and Associates a family of superheroes due to their inhuman abilities. These abilities include super strength, defiance of gravity, and seeming invulnerability as they walk away from crashes that should kill most humans. According to the theory, the spectacular car crash at the end of the original 2001 film left Dom in a coma, and every subsequent film is a product of his unconscious mind. Crazy, right? The theory is supported by several series of details, too. This includes the fact that Dom's taste in cars shifts dramatically after the first movie. So maybe the coma slash dream theory could also explain other events in the series, including all the crazy bank heists and stories that don't involve Dom at all. I don't know about you, but it seems like the fans are onto something. But I guess we'll never know for sure. Well, that's it for me about the real reason why the Fast franchise became ridiculous.